The following is a presentation of the Fairfax Network. Hola, ¿qué tal? Bienvenidos. Hello, welcome to our World Tour Language Series and to program number 12, Spanish program number 12 of our series. My name is Mrs. Ada. Me llamo Doña Ada. And I'd like to invite you to follow our objectives of the day. We have the following today. We have Taino Indians. We're going to discuss the Indians in Puerto Rico. We have the Boío Taino. We will attempt to make a Boío Taino. And then we will finish with reviews of adjectives and colors. So let's follow this uh, program because many of these things that we're going to follow today, we don't have them in our workbook. This has been an addition, a craft uh, program today. So let's start with uh, talking about the Tainos. I'd like to give you a little bit of the history of our Indians. And we're going to talk about that person that we have been already introduced to, Cristobal Colón, Christopher Columbus, Cristobal Colón. Cristobal Colón, in his second voyage in 1493, he came to our island of Puerto Rico. And he came in three vessels, they said. There was the, ves the vessel La Niña, the smaller one, then La Pinta, and La Santa Maria. To these vessels, they called them Carabelas. Carabelas, see the word? Carabelas. Carabelas, there's another word that sounds the same, but it has a small v, which is a, it has a total different meaning. But for now, carabelas is our word. These are the vessels. And as they arrived, they found our Indians um, uh, in Puerto Rico. I'd like to tell you about our Indians, where they come from, their origin. Um, it is said that um, the Ignatis were the first Indians that we have in history, in our history. They came from the Arawaks of South America. Now the Ignatis, or Igneri if you wish to say that, uh, they uh, were settled rather in, tri in the island of Trinidad and eventually came to our island. The Taino Indians come straight from the Ignatis and the Taino Indians have um, um, inherited quite a lot of the art of the Ignatis, such as uh, the clay work, clay art, and ceramics art. They also uh, have inherited the colors and the lines of this um, art. They are Taino Indians are very, very were very simple people. They lived very simply. They were very peaceful people. They live in in little huts, and they also had as furniture the hammocks, that's where the word amaca comes from, the hammocks. And today, I want to uh, tell you that as the Tainos decided to stay in Puerto Rico doing farming and doing fishing and hunting, um, the woman, the Taino woman I want to share before I forget that they were the ones really responsible for the Taino to stay in Puerto Rico because they were the farmers, the men hunted, and they fished, and the women were the farmers. And they produced the, uh, the, the land so well that they decided to stay in the island. And as they stay in the island, we find huts. And these huts, we call them boío, boío taíno. See the word boío? You also find it boío, boío taíno. Without uh, the silent H is, is silent, the H is silent. So boío taíno, which means the taíno hut. And the taíno hut was placed in the, a group of huts called cané. The chief of the tribe would always have a rectangular type of boío, and the rest of the population will have the round type of boío. Now, I like today to uh, make an a craft with you, uh, attempting to make a boío with clay. And I want to present to you the, the materials that we need to do that. This is not in the workbook, so if you want to follow, take pencil, take a paper, and write this down and follow it. We have the ceramics materials. We're using clay, 
and it's this type of clay, very easy to work with, that you buy commercially. You don't need to fire, fire it, as always, uh, all the ceramics. We need a rolling pin. It could be a big, a large one, or a small one. We need a toothpick, a soft cardboard. We need small bowl for water that we need. We need a plastic knife. We need a thin wire to cut through the clay and we need paper towels to clean our hands and keep clean. We also would like, I would also like to add that probably it's best to have wax paper over the table or the place where you're gonna work on. So let's sit back and watch this, the way we are going to do our hot, our boil. See we have here, we have the three pieces of cardboard. I call it cardboard, but I use folder type of paper that is soft, but not too soft and we cut them in two circles, one bigger, larger than the other, and then one strip. And then here we have our piece of clay. I told you it's commercial clay that does not need to be fired in those ovens that it's used in the ceramic art. We cut a block, and the way I cut it was, it was a huge piece of clay, and what I cut it with the wire, that thin wire that you can also buy in an art shop, or even you can cut it with a knife, it doesn't matter. So we have the piece of block ready, and what I did was use also a knife. Here is the knife that we use to cut the clay if you don't have a wire. We have the toothpick that we use, and that toothpick, as you see, is to make decorations. You'll see the way I'm doing with my hands is that we're gonna decorate our hut once it's finished. And we need a, a rolling pin. Now that rolling pin, I want to stress, you can use a tiny little one, a play rolling pin. It doesn't really need to be a big one. So here we have, we have made a ball out of that a little piece of clay. We work on it, manipulate it really, really well to create a, a round item, a round ball. And once we have it all ready, we are going to place it on our piece circled paper that we have already prepared to work on. And then yes, we are going to flatten our palm, the palm of our hand, and go straight to that piece of uh, circle, this piece of paper. And we're going to use the rolling pin, and we're going to roll it. And we're going to roll all over it to flatten it, not too thin. Make sure it's not too thin. Not too thick, but not too thin. And once we have done that, we continue our project. We are going to cut with our knife around it. See, the, the, don't use a real knife, it's not necessary. Besides, it's dangerous. So I will stress that you should have an adult with you always in these kind of projects. You never know. Even a little knife like this can, can uh, cut you, can hurt you. So be very careful. This is a very nice project that you can do in school or at home and, and make your own uh, decor from Puerto Rico. Once it's cut like that, you can keep the, the pieces for something else if you wish. You don't have to throw it away. You go around the edges to smoothen them really well. Smooth the edges, and once they're really nice and smooth, you can remove that piece of uh, the paper, that circle. Keep that circle for another project if you want, and keep tapping on it to make it really smooth, and that's going to become part of our hut part of our hut. We need, remember, we need two circles, and then we need a long strip as well. Here we have already the long strip that I worked on, on top of that paper. We're going to do just the same we did with the circle, put it on top of the paper, and, and roll it, and make it not so thick, but not so thin, and then you create it. You put it together with water. The water is to make like a kind of a glue with the clay. It sticks to the glue, to the clay, I'm sorry, like glue, and you work on it, and then you place that wall, which is supposed to be the wall, that wall on the circle, on that circle, and that's the small circle that becomes the floor. And you saw here that I put apply with water, so to glue it together. And then you go around and around and around, gluing the edges to the wall glue them well. Uh, as you can see, I'm not very artistic, but if you are artistic, you can put it really nice and smooth and, 
and the edges will look just like as part of the of that uh, wall. And once you have all these uh, things really nice and glue, you can work on it as much as you want. Keep working. You keep applying water to glue it well, like I did. This project, I have uh, taught her be taught it before, and children in, in school they have done it for presentations, like when they talk about. Puerto Rico and so forth, or the Indians, they have done it with clay and it's been very successful in school. So here we have already the wall ap applied to the, to the door. Now we're going to do the roof and here we take it in our palm of our hand and very, very carefully, because look what is going to happen. You try to make a concave uh, shape with your finger, with a thumb, but I, I assure you that if you're not careful, it's going to break. So be very careful. And if it breaks, just apply a little bit of water and smooth it out. But that's the shape of the roof. And once you have it really nicely worked, what you do is apply water on that edge of the top of the walls there. So you can attach the, the roof to it. And here is the way how you attach it. There you go. Touch it really well. There's always a little piece of the roof that's going to stick out, and that is the way we want it. We wanted the roof a little larger than the floor, so it'll be, it'll it'll stick out like a real roof of a house. See how it's done? Keep working on it. Keep smoothing it as much as you want. It's really fun to work with clay. And there comes the reason for having that toothpick. Look what I'm doing. I'm going to make the door or the entrance to the hut and I make a door shape type of a rectangular shape to make the door and then I pull out that piece of clay and it should be coming out any time. There you go. You can use that I, I believe you can keep it that way also like sort of the entrance of the hut but I prefer to cut it and then you just smooth the floor again and once it's all nice and smooth it should be better than this um, you can do pretty things with it take the toothpick and start working on the roof this is what your decoration start working around and make it like like thatched um, kind of uh, roof make it around and just keep decorating. You can also decorate the walls on the sides. It looks real pretty. I'm going to show you later on one that is all decorated with a toothpick. And you can just continue working on it and your heart's content. And here we have a real, uh, the one that we made. Uh, we added a little bird on the top and we also added, actually my mother made this one so you can see it's much, much prettier than mine. And we added nativity um, objects inside because we celebrate nativity during Christmas in our country. So here is a boio taino. And I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. If you have any questions, write to me and I will help you through the project. I hope you enjoy this project. Now we are going to our reviews. We're going to review the adjectives and we are going to start uh, looking on page 57 through 59. There are some pictures also in your workbook. Open your workbook, page 57. Let's start with delgado. Remember that one? Delgado. Now, what does that mean? Yes, delgado, delgado. And female of delgado is delgada. We just took that, dropped that O out and added an A. Delgada, which means slim or thin. And let's go to fail. I don't like very much this one, but we learn it nevertheless. Fail, which is ugly, and I don't think she, he's that ugly. And then fair, ugly, fair. So see, we dropped that O and we added an A. Drop the O, add an A. Here comes perezoso. You have this one already. We have learned this one, perezoso or perezoso which is lazy, and then perezosa or perezosa, 
perezosa. Ella es perezosa. She is lazy. You can make a whole sentence. You learn the pronouns and you have learned the verb is. Ser. So there we have it. Trabajador is the next one. Hard worker. Trabajador y trabajadora. Now we didn't drop anything here. What we did is added an A to trabajador. Trabajadora. There goes another one. Bueno. Oh, this one you know. This is a wonderful adjective. Bueno. And then we have the feminine buena. So we drop that O and we added an A. Let's see if you can read this one. Muy bien. Malo. Oh, I don't like to say malo to a person, but I'll say something is malo, it's not good, it's not, it's bad. And then mala, mala. You drop that O and add it an A. Most adjectives, that's the way it works. But of course, there's always rules and I will go through them when I find them. Rico, rico. Now let's pronounce that R. Rico, rico, rich, and that's what I want to be, rica, rica. And that is dropping the O and adding, adding an A, rica. And let's go to this one, vieja, vieja. Remember we talk about the, those additions of endearment that we add, viejita, I-T-A. We talked the other day about it. You can say viejita, it sounds much better than vieja. But this is the feminine of old. And then viejo, the feminine, the masculine of old. Viejo, we drop the A, we added an O. And then we have one that, it's good news, it doesn't change. Joven, for a female, joven. And for a male, it's joven again. This don't change, and this is, this is young, to be young. Joven, joven, joven. And one that changes, and we have seen it before, is pequeña. Now let's let's watch this. Pequeña, that Q and that U together. Pequeña, that U is silent. Pequeña, say it with me. Very good, estupendo. Pequeña, and let's go to the masculine of pequeña. It's pequeño, pequeño. There we have it, pequeño, not pequeño, but pequeño. Now let's go to another one. This one also does not change, it stays the same. How do you say that word? Muy bien, muy bien, estupendo, grande, grande, big elephant, big, grande. We can also say large, grande, and then grande for a male elephant, grande. So female and male is the same, grande. See that A, I just enlarge it, grande. I, I, it's a long A. Now let's go to the next one that changes. Alta, alta. It's tall, alta, and drop that A and add that O and it becomes alto. Alto, a basketball player is alto, alto. And we have baja, short, baja. We say, you know, remember that ITA again, bajita, bajita, she's bajita, ella es bajita, baja. And then we have bajo, the O, bajo makes it masculine, and we say bajito also in, in term of endearment, bajito or bajo. Now, don't forget those things. I hope as I went along with the language facts that you have jotted these down and, and write it because you can use it every, every time. There's many opportunities to use all these ideas. Let's go to one that does not change at all either. It's pobre. So a female that is poor is pobre. And a male that is poor is pobre. So the boy is poor, how would you say that? El niño es muy bien, pobre. El niño es pobre. So you have a full sentence that you have learned. Remember, we have learned verbs, 
uh, said, the verb uh, uh, is, which is said, we have learned the pronouns, el, yo, tu, el, ella, and so forth, and we have learned also articles like el and la. Join them together with these and you'll make sentences. Practice at home with your workbook, don't forget. Now we're going to practice a couple of things with, with vocabulary that we have learned. Let's start with, before we look at it, oh, here we have it, tres camisetas blancas. What does that mean in English? You know the numbers, you know the, the clothing, and you know your colors. Tres camisetas blancas. That means three white shirts. Absolutely right. Muy bien, mis estudiantes. Muy bien. Tres camisetas blancas. How would you say a brown hat? Estupendo. Muy bien. Muy bien. Un sombrero pardo. I said a brown hat, and that's exactly what you said. Un means a. Sombrero hat and pardo is brown. Now, you can see that in English, we would say the adjective before the noun, and then in Spanish, we just, all the way around, we put the noun first and then the adjective. What is the noun in here? Sombrero, very good. And the adjective is pardo. Now, pardo, remember, it has other, others also, other names. We say café, color café, or color marrón whichever is correct, whichever you, you prefer to use. And let's go to a pink blouse. How would you say a pink blouse? Fantástico. Muy bien. Una blusa rosada. Now, remember I said a, uh, and you say una. And remember I said blouse, you said blusa. And pink is rosada or ros rosa, like I, uh, we say in Puerto Rico, rosada or rosa. Now, see all these A's ending in A's? It is every single word here agrees with each other, and they're feminine. In Spanish, it's a very orderly la uh, uh, language, so everything that is feminine goes with feminine, everything that is masculine goes with masculine. So una is feminine, a uh, article. Blusa is feminine, and it's a blouse. And rosada is the adjective that will agree with all the other words, with the nouns. So, una blusa rosada. Very good. Muy bien. Let's go to the next one. And I have here white sandals. How would you say white sandals? You know these words. We have studied them before. Muy bien, muy bien. White sandals, remember our adjective goes after the noun, so we say sandalias blancas and I didn't ask for a, an article here I just said white sandals so you say sandalias blancas sandalias blancas sandals white is, is what literally means sandals white white sandals and we have a, a one that I hadn't introduced and I want to introduce it uh, it's a, a clothing item I don't recall having introduced it and it's uh, a necktie, and we say a gray necktie. Necktie is corbata. Say it with me. Corbata. It's a necktie, a necktie that we wear in our neck. Necktie. So we say, and this is um, also a feminine word, and is una. We have to put a feminine article. Corbata. And then gray good for us because the word gray in Spanish does not change. Either feminine or masculine stays the same. So it's gris. We can't say grisa, but we say gris. So it's una corbata gris. Now repeat after me. Una corbata gris. Muy bien, muy bien. A gray necktie. And let's see what we have. We have a blue dress. How do we say a blue dress? Muy bien, mis estudiantes. Un vestido azul. Azul is another adjective that does not change whether it's masculine or feminine. In this case, it's, it's vestido is masculine, correct. So we say un, because that's a masculine article, 
and it's, a, uh, it's an indefinite article that we have studied, and then it's un vestido azul, a blue dress. And then we have una, uh, I'm sorry, a skirt, a green skirt, una falda verde. Now, verde is another one that does not change. We don't say ver verda or verdo, but we say verde, ends in e. Both uh, circumstances are in, in the same adjective. So, una falda, and those two are feminine because skirt is feminine in, in, in Spanish, falda. Una falda verde. So it's perfectly all right. You see, una falda, una and falda agrees, and verde does not change. So it's a green skirt. Notice, notice, notice all the time that our nouns come first and our adjectives come later. Una falda verde. And we have um, one, uh, some more here. We have a red dress. How do we say a red dress? Un vestido rojo. Un vestido rojo. And see, o o's at the end, and then un. We don't say una vestido rojo. It's un vestido rojo, a red dress. It's very easy to confuse these and, and use the wrong article before the noun. The noun is vestido and the article is un. So study those very carefully. Uh, if you master these articles uh, and correctly when you are speaking in feminine and masculine, we are going to, uh, you are going to speak proper Spanish. Now let's go to another one, una falda roja. This is the feminine one of rojo. Una falda roja. It is a red uh, a skirt, a red skirt. That's exactly what it says, a red skirt. So it's una, because it's feminine, because falda is feminine, skirt, remember? Una falda roja, that R strong. That J is an H sound in English, ha. Huh. So it's roja, una falda roja. And I believe we're going to do very quickly the plural, one more plural, and then I will have to say goodbye. It says, unas faldas rojas. Unas faldas rojas. You see, it agreed in feminine, it agreed in, in plural, and it is an article and noun. Now I have to go for now. Study hard and keep in touch with me. Adios. Hasta mañana.